Okay, we're deep in this quarantine. I don't know. I think we're on like day 14 or day 15. We're deep. So if you want to excel in math and science, there's a way to do it. It's called this book, A Mind for Numbers, How to Excel at Math and Science, Even If You Flunked Algebra by Barbara Oakley, Dr. Barbara Oakley. Now, it's not hard to excel, sorry, it's cutting off my head. It's not hard to excel in math and science. It is hard, but there's a way to do it, and it is this book. Most people grew up thinking they either sucked at math, sucked at science, and could never do it. The sad thing is that a lot of people feel this way pretty early on in their lives. And so if you're a person from that background where you liked math and you went into high school, you took a math class that you didn't do so well in and then decided you were bad at math and you hated math and then that was it. You never took another math class again. That's a lot of us are in that boat and Barbara Oakley was in that boat. Um, she started, I think she, her first degree was in like Slavic languages, nowhere near close to um, science or math. So what happened was that she, um, early on in her career, she learned that she wasn't good at math. And so that led to her not liking it. After graduating from her um, bachelor's, she wanted to go back to school for an engineering degree. And then later she got a master's in, um, pretty sure it was computer engineering. and then a PhD in um, materials engineering, I think, um, close to that. But so you can see that somebody with, a, with no science or math background can succeed in STEM. And so if you're somebody who really wants to get into STEM, but you think that you don't have the skills to succeed in STEM, you need to read this book because this is very helpful. And how to study too, it, it sounds so simple, like people telling you, oh, there's a correct way to study or there's a more efficient way of studying. And you think like, it's just studying, like you just read the book, take notes, that's it, right? Well, no, in math and science, um, when topics get more abstract as it does in like more complex math and science classes, you have, there are certain ways of studying that help you understand and comprehend better. And this book is really good at kind of pointing um, some of that stuff out. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is the two types of thinking processes. The first is focus mode and the second is diffuse mode. And so to start off with, focus mode is when you are when you deliberately sit down and decide to f work on this programming algorithm that you wanna get done. So you sit down, you open up your book and you focus on that only. So that is focus mode when you um, just sit down and just focus on one specific assignment. Um, the thing is that focus mode doesn't last for that long and so your brain can't focus for that intensely for a long period of time. So with focus mode, you need to throw in diffuse mode. So what happens is when you're working on your focus mode, your brain's very intensely focusing, right? And then when you go to diffuse mode, your brain kind of loosens a little bit but what you are studying in your focus mode kind of stays in your brain and it kind of works while you're working on something else. So this is an example that's in the book and it's very interesting. There was a scientist and he was working on this theory um, and he was working very hard and like for years and years, but he couldn't come up with anything when he was in his focus mode. But one day when he was, I think like on a bus or something, while he wasn't thinking about his, um, uh, what he was working on, the answer just came to him because his brain was working in the background without him realizing it's like his subconscious is working. And so you need to give your brain enough time to process what you studied so that it can make the neural connections in the background. You know, sometimes with the focus mode, what what's happening is that you're getting a bunch of information thrown at you. And then when you go to diffuse mode, those information kind of like stay in the back, but then they make connections in the background. So then you can comprehend it more and it, it stays with you for longer. It's good for retaining information. That's why cramming never works for like deep understanding because with cramming, all you're doing is you're putting in 
all this information in your brain you know most likely the day before a test and then you know you could do well on a test like i've crammed before and done okay on a test but the thing is that the day after the test the week after the test where's that information it's it's not in your brain because you crammed you threw all that information at your brain it was there for one day and then it's gone there was no time for diffuse thinking to do its process um so another thing that goes hand in hand is procrastination and that's a hard one because i am a very big procrastinator now in math and science that is very dangerous because again when you're working with abstract um concepts as is the case in most stem fields you know in math um for example computer science that's what i'm doing right now there's a lot of abstract stuff in it and abstract is the kind of thing that it's not the kind of stuff that you get the first time you hear it like you go to lecture professor um explains some abstract const uh concept you, you you don't just like hear it and then get it immediately that's just i wish it worked that way but it's not that easy i'm sure some people are like that but i'm far from it like it takes me so long to grasp concepts and then put it into application so that's the thing is that when you procrastinate the day before and if we're doing a programming assignment let's say you start the day before and you're like coding 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 and then all of a sudden you get stuck on a bug now you can't move on for this assignment until you fix this bug and sometimes bugs take hours to fix and sometimes what happens is you you spend hours looking for it you don't find it the best approach is to just you know cool off try again the next day and you'll have a, a clearer head and you might actually find the bug but when you have a deadline that's the next day how are you going to find this bug you know so with programming and other um, engineering fields you can't procrastinate because you will not pass and that's just you know that's the reality of it you know i hate to say just don't procrastinate because that's just so much easier said than done but really if you think about kind of the background about how procrastination plays into your detriment then you might be more inclined to not procrastinate i don't know that's something that you know everybody has to learn the hard way because procrastination is like the universal thing I, everybody does it i've done it from like from the beginning of school like i even used to do it in high school and like i'm sure you know even middle schoolers do it so that's one big thing and also another good important tip is um it's always better to teach yourself the subject after you finish reading than to reread the whole chapter so let's say you read chapter nine of um your textbook and it was on i don't know finding the exponential equation <laughs> that was just random um and so you or you read the whole chapter and it is more beneficial for you to talk out loud what you thought the most important part about the chapter was than to reread the chapter your brain tricks you into thinking that you know something when you actually don't really know it so have you ever had a situation where you were in class the teacher was doing lecture and you understood everything in lecture like you you're like okay i got it i can do this homework and then you get home and you open your book and you try to do the problems and you couldn't do it has that ever happened to you that is very common that's called your brain uh thinks it's more competent than it actually is meaning you think that just because you understood something in class doesn't mean you fully understood it you most likely what happened was that the teacher was there she was guiding you along through the problems and then you understood it with her there and then when you but you're when you're by yourself you don't have that guidance and so you don't know where to start and so that is a very common thing that happens is your brain tricks you into thinking you know something when you actually don't that is something to watch out for i know that's not really a tip on how to improve in math and science but that is a tip to keep in mind that if that happens you're not dumb that is a common phenomena that happens to pretty much everybody and that just means that you're not quite as well worst in this concept as you thought you were and and that's kind of like the reality with a lot of science and math subjects it's it, it they take a while to actually like fully grasp and understand 
and put to use. So anyways, that's a few important topics from A Mind for Numbers. I would really encourage everybody to read this. Um, I got this from the library. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is a very good read, especially for like people who don't have a big math and science background. It's very helpful in knowing that there are people who have done this and succeeded and you can too. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like, comment, um, anything. We are um, in unprecedented times. We are in a quarantine and it seems like it's gonna go on for a while. So um, I don't know, get learning. Um, yeah, and I'll see you next time.